to another new video. Today we're talking about Pie Wall. I'll say right out of the gate, I don't think this is something that's going to be a permanent part of my config. I used it off and on for a little while, uh, and I've, I've since ditched it, but it's still one of the coolest apps that I have uh, encountered since I've been using Linux. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, well, actually, first, Whiskey, Johnny Walker, Double Black. This is uh, one of the best scotch blends I've ever found. All right, so if you're not uh, familiar with Pywall, let's uh, let's familiarize you. So the basic idea behind Pywall is an app that will take the colors from your wallpaper and then generate a color scheme based on it. Uh, and that's that's kind of a wild idea. You know, a lot of times you can build a really nice config here with transparency and things in your terminals, uh, and it'll look great on one wallpaper, not so great on the other, you know, because of brightness and transparency and things. But the idea, I guess, would be that if you're using the same colors that are in your wallpaper for the color scheme in your apps, uh, it'll sort of blend in a little bit better. And really the place where this app works well is on the terminal, on, uh, you know, various Kitty, Alacrity, Termite, all the terminals, um, and a lot of the terminal type apps, Vim, uh, Polybar 2, Dmenu, that type of thing, Rofi. I think it sort of falls apart a little bit with some of the GTK applications like Firefox and, and a few other things, just because it doesn't really update live. Uh, you can't just set a new wallpaper and the color scheme change the same way that it does in a terminal or in Vim or something. Uh, but we're going to look at couple of different apps here and uh, get this all set up. So really the installation isn't all that difficult. I didn't find it um, very hard at all. Uh, if you're on Arch Linux, I think you can just do uh, sudo pacman-s and install pywall, or maybe it's in the, uh, the AUR. Let me check real quick. Oh, okay, yes, cool. It's, it's right there in the standard uh, Arch Linux repository. It's called uh, Python Pywall is what you're gonna need to install. So we'll go ahead and do sudo pacman-s python Pywall. Okay. And it's a relatively small app, which I guess isn't that surprising. It's not doing anything that terribly complex. Uh, so one thing you can do is find out if your terminal will support uh, this color scheme. So apparently you can run this command. I didn't do this originally, um, but if you run this command, it's right there on the GitHub page in theory. Okay. Yeah. So it changes colors and I guess we're all set here. I'm using Alacrity. Here is the terminal. I believe this should work in Kitty or Termite. It's saying hyper uh, terminology, simple terminal, all that kind of stuff there. So pretty cool. Now what we need to do is basically set our wallpaper using the wall app. So I'm just gonna quit out here real quick and let's, uh... the way that this works is relatively simple. We're gonna, instead of setting your wallpaper with Fay or Nitrogen or anything else, you're gonna use the wall app to set it. Now there's ways to still use your standard wallpaper setter, but I, I think the idea of just using wall to set the wallpapers is actually a little bit better because you can um, just use wall to set your uh, wallpapers when you want the color scheme. And then if you no longer want to use the color scheme, it's relatively easy to just remove it from your config. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use wall to set the wallpaper here. Let me look at what the flags are here. So I'm going to do wall and just maybe give it an image to use. So we'll do media, uh, wallpapers, and then let me just pick a random uh, image here. Do this. Oh, okay, so you have to do uh, dash I. I swear I have done this before, I just totally forgot how to do it. Okay, so you can see it there running, and you can see my color scheme and my terminal has changed quite a bit. So at its most basic, this is sort of how the wall app works. But what you can also do with this app is just use it to pick a random wallpaper from a directory. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm looking at the config that I was using before, and I also had this dash Q flag in here. I'm not 100% sure what that does. It doesn't tell me in, oh, quiet mode, don't print anything. Okay, cool, that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna do wall, dash Q, and then dash I to set the wallpaper. And, uh, whoops. And then we'll give it a directory again. Uh, I store all of my wallpapers in the same folder. So I'm just gonna pick a wallpaper directory and I'm gonna give it just the directory. And what that should do is just pick a random wallpaper from that directory, which is basically the perfect setup for me. So you can see here now, let me uh, maybe float this window and then shrink it a bit. That might make it a little bit easier to see as we sort of change the wallpaper. It's going to take just a minute, but every time we generate a new wallpaper, it's going to completely change our color scheme for our terminal. So this is working out pretty well. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into my actual config. 
So what you could do is go into the config for awesome. I'm using the awesome window manager and down here where I have my, uh, my wallpaper setter here, I could basically just copy that and replace it with wall. That way, every time my session starts, it will set a wallpaper and change the terminal and everything along with it. Um, what you can also do is if I go into my config for Zish or whatever shell you're using, uh, you could make a little alias, which I think I've done before. Um, I've got one here to set a wallpaper again, and I'll just sort of copy that right in. And I don't actually use this one anymore, so I can just delete it. Um, but now you can see if I were to reload Zish, we can now sort of cycle through wallpapers and get a new color scheme every time we do that, which is cool. But we can take it a lot farther than just the terminal. Um, so for example, if I go into, into Vim, we're still gonna be using the standard color scheme that we usually use. Um, I'm, I'm a Grovebox kind of guy. So what we can do is, using whatever package manager you use for Vim or whatever, uh, we can actually install a Vim plugin to get this working pretty easily. This right here is the uh, wall Vim plugin. It's by a guy named Dylan Araps. Dylan Araps, I don't know. Basically, all you need to do is copy the uh, user and then the name of the repository. That's generally how installing apps in Vim works. And then we'll just put it right here. I'm using a Vim plug to install apps in case you're curious. Uh, then we can just exit out of Vim or refresh of Vim, whatever you wanna do. And I'm gonna do plug install. It's gonna go ahead and install that plugin. Then I'm gonna come down to my color scheme settings uh, and I'm just gonna change the color scheme from Grovebox to wall. And you also need to comment out this thing here, set term GUI colors. This is like a fairly common color preference that people have in Vim. Uh, you need to turn it off or it won't work properly. So we're gonna quit again. Now if we reload, we have a Vim color scheme. And just in case you're curious, it does actually update live the same way that the terminal does. So that's pretty nice. Uh, actually, what you should probably do if you're vaguely interested in PyWall at all is just come to the GitHub page. And then if you come over to the wiki and just click on customization, it's sort of a really nice guide for how to use PyWall with a lot of the applications that you might want to use it with. Uh, so Steam, Discord, uh, those are some like graphical applications that it might work with, uh, various window managers here, i3, BSP, WM, DWM, all that kind of stuff, Rofi and DMenu, um, Emacs, Vim, VS Code, Polybar, Lemonbar. Uh, you can sort of go through and really see how to do a lot of cool stuff here. There's even a way to theme the Firefox reader mode with whatever wallpaper you're setting. So let's go ahead and go a little bit further. I wanna use this on Polybar, cause I think that would be nice. So I'm gonna go into my config for Polybar, and it's standard config. And this is probably a good time to mention sort of how Polybar works is when you run it, um, it has a cache file that it updates all the time. So if we open up a file manager and we go into a cache, I think it's in doc cache, and we go into wall, uh, you can see here it has colors, a scheme that it generates based on every wallpaper. So in theory, I guess once you've done it enough times, since it's saving all the themes here, uh, it should be faster once you've run it through all your wallpapers a couple of times. I don't know if that's true at all. That's just a guess. Uh, but you can see here it actually creates an individual config for all of the different apps that you might want to use it with and all of the ones that it supports out of the box. Okay, so go back into the polybar config and I'm going to, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna comment out my, I forgot how to do comments in the polybar config. Actually, no, I didn't, that's it. Okay, so all we should have to do is copy in these color settings that are gonna pull from uh, that cache file that we just talked about. Uh, and assuming that you have your background color and stuff set to pull from these color values set up here, you should be all set. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit that and reload. And now let's watch our polybar change with the monitor with the wallpaper as well. Yeah, there it goes. That's looking pretty nice. Okay, cool. So now's the point where it's probably best to talk about graphical applications. And uh, by graphical applications, I mean mostly um, stuff like Firefox, uh, Spotify, uh, Steam, that kind of stuff. There are a lot of different ways to get PyWall to interact with these, but I, I don't actually think it's the best idea. Um, so let me give you an example here. Uh, I'm just gonna use Steam as an example uh, because that's one of the easier ones to get 
uh, set up. Uh, so all you need to do, assuming you're on Arch Linux uh, and assuming you have access to the AUR, which you should if you're on Arch Linux, is uh, we're going to do yay-s and I'm going to install a, pi a package called Python uh, wall steam git. And I've picked a nice sort of purple wallpaper here so that uh, it should be pretty obvious when we do this. I'm going to go ahead and open up Steam here. And then all you should need to do is come over to Steam, go over to Settings, and then over in Interface, Default Skin, you should be able to select this new thing here, Metro 4.4 Wall Mod. Hit OK. We're going to have to restart Steam like you do every time you do anything in Steam. Uh, but then you can see we've launched Steam, and it has some theme on it. Mm. Let me quit, and then we'll run Wall again until we get to like a super obvious... Something with a lot of color. Oh yeah, that green will work. Um, so then if I relaunch Steam, you can see it's got some green colors up here, some yellow. It's 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 doing what we want it to. Uh, but the issue is when I start to change the uh, wallpaper, everything else is going to update. Like Polybar is going to update. Alacrity is going to update. If I go into uh, a file in Vim, Vim is going to update. Everything that's on the command line will sort of update live. The GTK apps, the graphical apps, they don't. So that's sort of a deal breaker for me. And that's kind of where I think we should end the video. Because like I said, this this repository will give you very specific instructions for how to get this working and basically any app you could want to get it working in. But I don't know that it's necessarily a good idea to get it working in every single app that you possibly could. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that. There's even ways to set the color scheme for your keyboards. So we have like a Razer keyboard or a Honda Tech keyboard. That's wild. This is like one of the coolest apps I've ever come across. And it's I'm, I'm sort of upset with myself that I'm not more into it. I, I don't know why exactly. I just I don't really love the idea of setting multiple themes based on different wallpapers. Like it's cool. I freaking love that this exists. It's just not really my thing. Uh, but, you know, hey, that's it. I hope I hope you like it. Uh, and if you do, uh, cool. Um, thanks for watching the video. If you need a VPN, still got the affiliate deal with Pure VPN, so check them out. That seems to be a good, reliable solution. But that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody.